Hey everyone, welcome to Tony for Patrician Taste. Uh, I mean Tony for you. I've played my fair share of Shin Megami Tensei games, from mainline to spin-offs, great remasters, and not so great. After experiencing a good amount of the games, I think my top 5 favorite SMT games are pretty set in stone now. For my taste in games, I greatly value story over gameplay, so the list may have some picks that many may overlook at first due to their age or how different they are gameplay wise. If you're anything like me and can look past some change and a little bit of jank, you'll have a fantastic time with these titles. This list will encompass all mainline games, like 1 through 5, as well as the spin-off games, like Digital Devil Saga and Devil Survivor, but if the game has a sequel, it will be limited to one game per that series, so no repeats of Devil Survivor 1 and 2 or Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2, I'll have to choose one. This list will not cover Persona, as that's another video I have planned in the future, and demands a more in-depth discussion. I'll keep spoilers to a minimum in this video, so if you're interested in playing any of the games, you can watch the whole segment, but if you want to skip it, there will be timestamps in the description. Without any further ado, let's jump into the list. Before we get into the video, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, Baiyi. There's nothing more frustrating than having something region locked. Seeing the coolest piece of merch slip right through your fingers just because you don't live in the right country. What could be worse? And if you're anything like me, the stuff you want comes from Japan. Well, that's where Baiyi comes in. This is a Japanese website that can place bids and orders on your behalf. Then, with no hassle and no ridiculous markup, they send it right to you. They have a great selection to choose from as well, with storefronts like Yahoo Japan Auction, Rakuten, Mercari, and even Amazon Japan. Never before have I been able to fill the void on my shelf without making a void in my wallet. They offer support in several different languages and ship worldwide, so no matter where you are, Baiyi's got you covered. They offer plenty of different payment and shipping methods as well, so don't worry about a thing. If all that wasn't good enough, everybody that signs up using the link in the description below will get 2,000 yen or about $20 off their first purchase on the website. If you're interested, sign up and browse with 2,000 yen off. Thanks Baiyi for sponsoring the video. Number 5. Devil Survivor 2 Record Breaker I know what you might be thinking. Devil Survivor 2 over Devil Survivor 1? Have you lost your mind? Well, some would say yes, but I feel people should absolutely give this game credit where it's due. This game focuses on a plot not too dissimilar to the first game, where you get a strange app on your phone that allows you to see how someone dies. Not exactly water cooler conversation, but you download it anyway, and receive a grisly video showing your own death. You and your friends are to die in a grisly train accident. When they get to the station, the scene unfolds, but this time a demon appears and knocks the train away, forcing them to defend themselves. They get the demon summoning program on their devices, and the rest is history. What sets this game apart from the first narratively is the protagonist and his school friends join an organization called Gyps, in which you go on more linear missions with the goal of defeating the Septentrions with a more official backing to it. The game doesn't have the same scramble for survival that the first game had, but in its place is an extremely intriguing story of world-ending powers, group infighting, genuine moral dilemmas, and a good amount of theological significance to it all. In the early sections, you are eased into the characters and their motivations, which have their ups and downs, but overall the cast is immediately quite likable. Day by day, however, the stakes rise to a fever pitch, which forces all parties involved to choose a side in reshaping the world. There's a good selection to choose from for endings as well, and as some of you may know from my Top 5 Alignment Reps video, this game is home to one of my favorite endings in the entire series. This game is unique in SMT as it has a system remarkably close to that of the Social Link system in Persona as well. And best of all, it has bearing on the story in a big way, and whether or not you'll be able to connect to your party members on a deeper level when they face the world-ending crisis. The gameplay is exceptionally improved in this game over the first one as well. With a much higher variety of demons, the ability to teach cracked skills to demons with the new add-on system, and enhanced racial skills, these changes allow for each playthrough to feel incredibly different and encourages experimentation with the new systems. These changes, along with the pseudo-social link system mentioned before, frequently gets people calling this the SMT game with the highest replay value. Though if you're a player like me, someone who likes to use a guide to experience everything and get the true ending, that is still totally possible. If you aren't too big a fan of tactical RPGs but still want to experience the story, there are even multiple difficulty settings allowing for easier completion. Sadly, a lot of the SMT and even RPG community has overlooked this game, but it's definitely earned a spot as one of my favorites in the series. Number 4. Shin Megami Tensei 4 the fourth numbered Shin Megami Tensei game is a landmark of the series, and a favorite amongst all RPG fans. As the first game many people have played in the series, it holds a special place in the hearts of the community. I personally didn't start my journey into SMT with this game, 
Still, no one should be surprised with its inclusion on the list. The game has you playing as Flynn, a newly selected samurai tasked with defending the Eastern Kingdom of Mikado, the main kingdom of the land. Alongside your other freshly appointed samurai, you train together and the hidden truth of the kingdom is revealed. Underneath Mikado is a dungeon called Naraku, inhabited by demons. After delving into the depths of Naraku a number of times, it's revealed that a woman clad in black armor is transforming humans into demons. In order to go after her, you'll have to descend to the very bottom of Naraku, where no man has ever been before. At the bottom, it's revealed your kingdom was built atop the very modern city of Tokyo, Japan. The quality of narrative, characters, gameplay, and that oh-so-wonderful soundtrack is just superb. When I first played this game though, I actually didn't care too much for it. I went for the law ending and was mildly satisfied. The real love for this game though came on my second playthrough, after getting a few other SMT games under my belt. When I first started, I could barely get through the tutorial dungeon of Naraku and negotiate with my first demon. This forced me to drop the game down to the dreaded, easy mode. I shudder to think how despicably casual I was. I was frustrated and uncomfortable with the SMT games as a whole. Smirk didn't help either I suppose. Coming back to it years later for the research of my alignment discussion video allowed me to give the game a fair second chance. Going for the neutral ending forced me to interact with the side quests more, which in turn allowed me to get more immersed in the world and appreciate the wonderful writing I didn't pay much attention to the first time around. From the very beginning, this game wows you with the beautiful art style and character design, with the cast equally as varied and likable. Walter, Jonathan, and Isabeau all have interesting chemistry and are a pleasure to hear go back and forth with their unique personalities. This develops as the game's stakes rise to the typical SMT reshaping the world plotline, with each of them naturally progressing their values into fervent ideals in trying to shape the world to their dream. The amount of time spent with each of these characters allows you to feel attached to them. All the training they do together and the tragedy they endure accumulates to a fever pitch when the twists and turns of the story hit them and they eventually split off. The game will have changes with who accompanies you in areas and even major changes to the story events as well, depending on the virtues you exhibit in your choices along the adventure, leading to a surprising amount of replay value for an RPG. Everything from the reveal of Tokyo under Naraku to the more late game plot reveals I will not mention are exquisitely unveiled and accompanied by a soundtrack that is probably one of the best in video games, period. Exploration is always exhilarating, and aside from the extremely confusing overworld, is always progressing at a comfortable pace requiring very little grinding, if any. And no matter what area you're in, there will always be an earworm of a track that will stick with you for what feels like forever as you hum it for the rest of the night. The gameplay is fairly standard for Shin Megami Tensei, with the press turn system and demon party members, but the new demon whisper system allows for the player's skills to be powered up over the course of the game. This incentivizes cycling out demons and constantly changing up spells and game plans. There's a metric ton of demons to choose from over the course of the game as well, so in that regard, it will not leave you wanting. And if you're a lore junkie like me, reading the little compendium entries for each is always a treat. I'm a sucker for bestiaries in any game really. Unfortunately, the game is not without faults, as it suffers from a reverse difficulty curve. The beginning is extremely difficult, and it only gets easier as time goes on, with some difficulty spikes here and there. Build diversity is also extremely lacking, as there's pretty much no reason not to dump all your points in your main damage dealing stat. For my case, it was always magic. The smirk system is also a highly contentious addition to the game, as it allows anyone who is in some way unaffected by a skill, whether by nulling it, reflecting it, or just plain having it miss, makes them have a guaranteed hit and basically guaranteed critical hit, in addition to removing any weakness they had previously. While it's pretty nice to have members of your party smirking, it's absolutely devastating when an enemy has it. This system lends itself to some less than ideal scenarios, and in some cases, instant party wipes. The good greatly outweighs the bad however for the gameplay, and fights are usually incredibly strategic and satisfying to get through if you craft your party intelligently. For everyone not looking for that much of a challenge, or wishing to sidestep any potential frustrating situations, like I said before, there is an easy mode. No shame in using it. Pound for Pound, one of the highest quality SMT games out there, with all aspects of narrative, characters, music, and art direction being above average quality to straight up god tier. Number 3, Devil Summoner 2. Raido Kuzunoha vs King Abaddon, or more commonly referred to as Raido 2. I know I said most RPG fans overlook Devil Survivor 2, but the sheer underappreciation this game gets destroys me. It feels like this game was specifically made to appeal to my tastes. Everything from the art direction, fantastical yet modern setting, blend of action and RPG gameplay, and music that will have you thinking it's actually a Persona game, is astounding. This game stars the titular Raido Kuzunoha, 
spiritual warrior chosen by the Yadagarasu and defender of Tokyo, set in the early 1930s. The Raido series is possibly the biggest departure gameplay-wise, with the more action orientation. And yeah, it isn't the most polished gameplay in the series, but it's more than the sum of its parts. As the spiritual defender of Tokyo, you are employed by the Narumi Detective Agency, a place of commerce that only takes special jobs. With the light-hearted yet serious tone of the main detective agency denizens in Shohai Narumi, Tei Asakura, Raido Kuzunoha, and his talking ancestor cat Goto Doji, the plot starts when a young girl named Akane enters the agency and asks you to find a man named Don. The story starts off as a missing persons case, but spirals out of control to a world-ending cataclysm where the forces of hell invade Earth. In short, this game is the regular show of SMT. What really sets this game apart to me is the way they handle alignment. In other SMT games, your alignment completely changes the outcome of the characters and even the world as a whole. In Raido 2, however, alignment is portrayed in a much more realistic sense, where your mission is to stop the world from being destroyed regardless of alignment. But your ideals as Raido himself change the events very slightly. The principles Raido holds makes characters treat him differently. Certain story points are completely recontextualized if you choose different dialogue. Raido 2 shows real-life examples of what law and chaos could mean to different people. A lawful Raido values adherence to the status quo and the importance of duty to your role as Raido Kuzunoha the 14th. A chaotic Raido remembers himself before donning the title and values individuality and improvement above established rules and the feelings of others. A neutral Raido has a healthy mix of the two, being able to discern right from wrong as himself and as Raido. This game has the perfect amount of moral dilemma over the course of its story, and while not changing the narrative itself in too major a way, got me contemplating my own values and placing myself in the main character's shoes more than any other game in the series. Both Raido games have fantastic stories, and as much as I'd love to discuss the narrative in depth, it's a story for another time. The mechanical improvements made on Raido's sequel cannot be understated either. The simple addition of a roll button and one more demon party member makes this game so much more fun to play. While a good amount of random battles, which you'll be fighting a lot of, boil down to button mashing, the bosses utilize the systems better and are almost like puzzle fights. Recognizing telegraphed moves, dodging out of the way, and punishing are incredibly satisfying. Kind of reminds me of another game. The sound design is a little over the top, but in the best way possible. Just screaming classic violent anime all accompanied by one of my favorite soundtracks in Megaten, and home to my personal favorite track in the entire series, Adventure. I absolutely love the extremely unique 1930s Japan aesthetic and the characters of this game, with Shohai Narumi, Nagi, and Don Tsukigata as some of my favorite characters in the series. There are a lot of people who played the first game in the Raido series and didn't enjoy their time. I can't blame them with the gameplay of the first one, despite how amazing the story is. But if you're at all convinced by anything you've heard thus far, this game will give you an experience that will stick with you for a long time. Number 2, Shin Megami Tensei 3, Nocturne, featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. This title is what most people think of when they hear Shin Megami Tensei, and for good reason. There was a huge technical jump from the previous mainline entry, and it was the first in the series to get a North American release. As fans, we owe a lot to this game, and the success is well warranted. The introduction of the game has an obscured woman relaying a prophecy where the world must be destroyed in order to be born anew, but she wishes to save you. Nocturne has you in the shoes of a young man visiting his teacher in the hospital at the behest of your friends. The walk up to the hospital has you hearing about an immense increase in violent crime and even rumors of strange religious cults. When you finally get to the hospital, you meet your friends, Isamu and Chiaki, but no sign of your teacher, Miss Takao. After some exploration, you find her in the basement as well as another man named Hikawa. He's revealed to be able to summon demons and shortly after brings about the apocalypse. Only those in the hospital are spared their lives and before you wake up, a strange boy drops a bug into your mouth forcing you to become a demi-fiend. Yeah, this game starts with the world ending. Nocturne is an addition to the list some might think goes contrary to the values I mentioned before. I much prefer story to gameplay and Nocturne is all gameplay, right? Absolutely not. Nocturne is a game I hold near and dear to my heart as the first Shin Megami Tensei game that really floored me. The narrative is subdued. It isn't showed to you in hour-long cutscenes or shot reverse shots of characters talking about what just happened. It's a surreal experience of traveling through a destroyed world trying to get your bearings and coming to terms with the insanity around you. This game is a master of downtime. A design popularized by Half-Life as the designer specifically allowed puzzles and simple traveling to be breaks from the action equating them to a sorbet in a multi-coursed meal, giving you time to pause and appreciate what just happened, and what comes next. 
You may think it odd to talk about this in a JRPG, as the game can't rush you to do anything. It is turn-based after all. But it still applies in a narrative sense in this case. The passive storytelling in this game allows for the more impactful moments to hit harder than any other JRPG could hope to. In most RPGs, the storytelling is a lot more in your face. Constant dialogue between party members, cutscenes interrupting you when you turn every corner, everyone having to explain how they feel in any given scenario, but not Nocturne. The average Philistine RPG player may tell you this game has no story, a weak narrative, and underdeveloped characters, but a true patrician RPG enjoyer knows better. What little you get in character interaction is more than enough to understand the path each character chooses. Isamu, Chiaki, and Hikawa all vocalize their ideals to you in a beautifully stylized monologue, and whether you agree or not, you have plenty of time dedicated to just exploring and reflecting on what just happened. Even the way the labyrinth of Amala is spaced out in such a way that you progress through it over the course of the entire story, I cannot praise enough. One of my earliest videos is discussing the endings of this game in detail, and it was simply because I reflected on the choices so much throughout the entire game. Even after finishing it, the spiritual and philosophical questions really stuck with me. The name of the game is Atmosphere, and I know that's a meaningless term to most people, but the vortex world you explore in this game that has a blend of modern areas, insane magic towers, and mixes of both, really set the game apart from contemporary RPGs, and even modern RPGs. The gameplay itself is Shin Megami Tensei in its purest form. Turn-based combat, press turn system, demon element strengths and weaknesses, it's all here with no extra fluff. Nocturne isn't the easiest game around, nor does it have that much in the way of quality of life, assuming you're playing the original version. The random battles hit hard, and the bosses even harder. But overall, if a guy like me can beat it, you can too. I believe in you. They really don't call Nocturne one of the best RPGs ever made for nothing. Number 1. Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Specifically, the original DS1, and not Redux. I'm not going to go into why Redux is specifically not on the list, as I want it to be positive. Just know, the original Strange Journey might as well be a completely different game. Strange Journey can be attributed to my gaming apotheosis. When I beat this game, I knew I loved this series, and I had the passion to talk about these games on YouTube. So, if it wasn't for original Strange Journey, you wouldn't have Tony for you. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! In the South Pole, a strange black hole-like anomaly appears. The ever-expanding threat prompts the governments of the world to band together and send their best soldiers and scientists to investigate and stop whatever might be happening. The world is falling apart around you though, as violent crime and corruption are at an all-time high, and right as soon as some hope for success is shown, you are plunged into the real hell of the Schwarzfeld. After one of the most attention-grabbing intros to any RPG ever, the game moves on to being a fight for survival against demons, and eventually a fight for the future of the world, in typical SMT fashion. Strange Journey is unique, as it's one of the few SMT games where you play as an adult, one of the few JRPGs in general really, quite a capable adult too, as you're one of your country's best soldiers and eventually are promoted to squad leader after events I will not spoil. Fighting for survival, exploring an alien land, dealing with the unique perspectives of everyone fighting alongside you, all these aspects come together to be one of the most fun and difficult to put down games I've ever played. I don't even resonate with sci-fi very much, but this game's pacing and story themes had me hooked and loving every minute of it. The mission structure constantly has you on a task to accomplish with a marker, but lets you explore as you see fit. The sectors are excellently paced as well, so don't let anyone fool you into thinking this game is a back of the cereal box maze simulator. They're handcrafted to make sure nothing is too overwhelming as areas are sectioned off requiring upgrades to your character. There's an astounding amount of sectors as well, each with their own quirks to exploration and suite of new demons to uncover. Narratively, the sectors all have symbolic meaning on the actions of mankind and is one of the most outwardly philosophical JRPGs I've played, drawing inspiration from films like Damnation Alley and The Thing. These themes lend themselves well to the world-shaping nature of Shin Megami Tensei, as when they ask you to reflect on the themes of human nature and what's best for the world, in these games, you actually get to reshape it in one of many different ways. The characters' developments, from hardened soldiers to people simply pushed to their breaking points, is portrayed captivatingly, and the alignment representatives are some of the best in the series. So Lennon, my beloved. The sound design and music are incredibly unique for the series, with a much more intense orchestral, almost opera-like feel that accompanies the game superbly. From somber melodies to heart-pounding action, I felt I knew exactly the emotions of my character in any given scenario. I can't gush enough about this game's story and aesthetic, but the gameplay is… pretty good. 
The big difference of this game mechanically is the demon co-op system. If you or your demons share an alignment, they will follow up a party member's attack with their own, assuming it hit their weakness or was a critical hit. The system is flavorful, as demons in your party put in extra effort in helping those who share their own beliefs, but mechanically, the press turn system is simply more fun to play with. The game is also hard. Like, really hard. I'm not the most elite of RPG players, but this was one of the most difficult games in the series I've played. Yet, completing it was a very satisfying experience. For those really struggling though, there is a demon password system, where you can log demons as passwords. This system allows hand crafting of the best demons possible, and can be found on the internet to help you at almost any level. I will never stop loving this game, and it stands tall as my favorite in the Shin Megami Tensei series. That was the list, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your favorite SMT games in the comments down below, and while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. A video like this is a rite of passage for any Megaten content creator, and I'm glad I could put my thoughts out there. Special thanks to Frankie Stone, Heavenly Potato, James Taylor III, John, Konyuna, Mega X454, Mr. Eight Eyes, Video Gamer75, and many more for supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Tony for You. Have a good one.